Romania in the late 1930s was not in an enviable position. It had rapidly grown after victory in the First World War and now incorporated many new territories from its vanquished neighbours. They also nabbed this land called Bessarabia from the collapsing Russian Empire during its civil war. These neighbours, Hungary and the Soviet Union, wanted these territories back. Of particular concern was this area within Transylvania, which had a large Hungarian population. Problems really began for Romania after the Third Reich and the Soviet Union signed the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact in 1939. Within this pact was a secret protocol which designated that the Soviet Union had a right to these lands called Bessarabia and Bukovina. On June the 26th, 1940, the Soviet Union sent an ultimatum to Romania, give us these lands or we'll invade. The government conceded because they knew that this was a war they couldn't win and in the end the USSR annexed this territory. You see, the Hungarians now smelled weakness and so decided that it was time for them to press their claims to Transylvania. Hungary wanted it all, Romania's response was no and talks between the two collapsed. Enter stage left the Germans, led by Adolf Hitler, who demanded that the situation be mediated. Hungary, led by Miklos Horthy, was pretty happy with this, since over the past few months Germany had rewarded it with some of its former lands back. The Romanians really didn't want to give up any more land, but they also really didn't want to fight the Hungarians. As such, the Romanians offered up this land, northern Transylvania, to Hungary on the condition that the Axis promised to protect the country's remaining borders. This was all agreed on August the 30th, 1940, and thus Romania's borders were a lot smaller. Demonstrations broke out across the country, which notably included the Iron Guard, also called the Legion, which was a fascist-adjacent movement. General Ion Antonescu, who was backed by the Legion, was invited to become Prime Minister by King Carol on the 5th of September, and after taking up the post, he demanded the abdication of the King the next day. Carol thus fled to Switzerland, taking a bunch of gold with him, and his son Michael was crowned King, but only held ceremonial powers. The rise of the Iron Guard in Romania is often seen as a Nazi-backed coup, which turned the country into a puppet state. To put it simply, this wasn't the case, and the German government urged Antonescu not to remove the King since they were unsure about him. So, remember when I said that Germany would guarantee the integrity of Romania's borders? About that. On September the 7th, Bulgaria demanded that they be given southern Dobruja. Germany backed this claim and Romania yet again had to yield. On November the 23rd, Antonescu formally signed up to the Tripartite Pact and became a formal member of the Axis. Why? Well, despite having territory ripped away from his country three times with German agreement, Antonescu needed to preserve Romanian independence. Neutrality was no guarantee since Romania's oil reserves were too strategically important. How about siding with the Allies? Britain was a continent away, and to be frank, look how Poland had fared. And as for Stalin, well, let's just say that was a pretty firm no. Besides, Hitler used territorial rewards as a way of keeping the Axis together, and made it clear that if Romania made a major contribution to the coming war with the USSR, they would get their territory back, plus more. Thus, it's pretty clear that Romania's joining of the Axis wasn't based on ideology, but simply a desire to survive. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching, and a special thanks to all of these patrons you see on screen for their generosity in supporting the show, and a particularly special thanks to James Bizonet, Party Boyko, Azarka Flash, Rob Waterhouse, Chris Wicker, Michael Reynolds, Thomas McGill, Gustav Swan, Winston Kaywood, Sky Chappelle, The Amusement Archives, Adam Harvey, and lastly, Raphael.